Hello and welcome to part three of Enterprise Power Apps and Power Automate Governance. You'll find the previous two parts, parts one and two, in the description of this video. So go ahead and check out those links if you haven't seen those before, because this is really a continuation of the content that was presented previously. In the previous content, we talked about secure and what are some of the things that you can do to proactively secure your environment and tenant? Then in part two, we talked about monitor. What are some of the things that you should be doing to monitor your users and your environments to ensure people are doing the right things? Now, lastly, we're going to talk about alert and action. And what are some of the steps that you can do as an administrator to ensure that you are tightening up your environment and actually responding to behaviors that may not align with your organization's ambitions. Before we continue with the content, I wanted to bring some attention to an emerging serverless community, which is found at serverlessnotes.com. At this webpage, you will be able to subscribe to newsletters and discover articles related to popular serverless technologies, including Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Event Grid, Azure Functions, and much more. This community is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure serverless technologies. Go ahead and check that out at serverless360.com. So the first thing we want to talk about is management connectors and PowerShell. So we did talk a little bit about these before in the previous section, but these become very important to us as we want to be able to act. Now, it's easy to go ahead and send out notifications and detect certain events, but where you really get the value out of these connectors and tools is when you can actually automate those actions. If you're dependent upon a person hitting F5 and constantly refreshing their, their screen in an admin console, you're going to see situations where behavior slips through the cracks and you're not able to actually go ahead and shut down that behavior. But by using these connectors, you actually have the ability to go ahead and do so. So if you haven't checked out the PowerShell commandlets, here's a link, go ahead and check them out and check out the scenarios that are enabled by using these commandlets. Now, one thing we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and send out proactive engagement. Now, what does this mean? Why would we do this? We've talked a little bit before about there's two lenses or two sides to the coins when it talks about governance. Governance comes in the sense of I'm going to prevent something from happening, but governance also allows for you to enable your users to do more when they actually are exhibiting good behaviors. And so here's an example. We can go ahead and detect when someone creates a flow for the first time. Well, how do we do that? We do that by using the management connectors and essentially using a repository to store a list of all of our users. It could be an Office 365 group, it could be an Azure AD group, or it could be a SharePoint list, for example. And so what we can go ahead and do is actually check for that membership in one of those groups. In this case, the scenario we're gonna walk through is around Azure AD. And if they don't belong to that list, then what you can do is send them a notification and actually welcoming them to the service and then going ahead and adding them into that AD group. So the next time they create a new flow that they don't actually get that email. Now, what's important about this is that you, number one, are giving your users permissions to go ahead and actually use this tool. But number two, you're giving them resources that they can actually use in order to get up to speed with the service. Now, if people are using the tools and then they get frustrated and they stop, well, you could argue that that's a waste of time because the company got no value from them investing in that learning. However, if they actually have resources and have the ability to go ahead and use that training to deliver on some productivity solutions, then that's a win. And so you wanna ensure that if people are gonna use the tools, they actually have a chance to be successful. And then thirdly, what's really important is that you can start to communicate your policies. So for example, most organizations have an acceptable technology use policy. 
It's an opportunity to include a link to that reminding people that your actions will be monitored and that there are behaviors that are not aligned with company policies. And so that's something to call out as well. And then what you can go ahead and do is also talk about DLP. If there's specific actions that are going to be blocked, you can communicate this information up front so that people don't get blindsided after they've built their great flow that sends all of their email to Gmail and get frustrated. You can actually educate them up front that that is not acceptable behavior. Now, another thing that we can do is we can go ahead and identify and empower champions. And we can do so using the management connectors and we can go ahead and detect when people are creating flows, power apps, and even custom connectors. Now, once again, this is a two-sided coin. If you see that someone is creating a timesheet application and maybe your organization has a timesheet application already, that may not be a good thing, right? That's actually creating sprawl and it's actually not you know, doing your company any good. But perhaps there are scenarios where someone needs to build a tracking app and they've used Excel in the past, but it doesn't scale well and it doesn't have approvals and notifications. That might be a scenario where it's like, hey, so-and-so from finance is actually building out this tracking app. And this sounds interesting based on the title of the application and the flows. I'm going to go reach out and see if they need help. Because if we can help our finance group become more efficient, that is ultimately good for the company. So once again, two sides to this coin, but by being able, to, being able to track this information is actually a good thing. And so what I've done in the past is I'm a recipient of this digest, but we've also included our cybersecurity team receiving these notifications as well. And it gives them some passive oversight in terms of what are people doing inside of the organization with the Power Platform. Once again, this is a template that you can go ahead and use by clicking on the following link or essentially just going ahead and searching inside of the flow templates gallery. Now, another thing that you should really be looking at is the Center of Excellence Starter Kit. You can go ahead and download it at the following link, aka.ms slash COE Starter Kit. There is no cost for this starter kit. However, do know it is based upon CDS. So depending upon your organization's licensing, arrangement with Microsoft, you may have entitlement to CDS, you may not, uh, but just something to be aware of. But regardless, what I would say is that it is good to use and worth the investment of you spending the time configuring and deploying these apps. But if there happens to be a licensing implication, it's worth, it's worth, the, it's worth the, what you're going to spend on it. So what are some of the things that you can do with this toolkit? And I've got a few screenshots to help make this a little bit more real. But there's things like a DLP editor. Now this is a little bit different than the DLP editor that we've seen uh, in the admin console where this gives you some what if scenarios. There's the ability to monitor, so dashboards. Probably my favorite feature of the starter kit is the Power BI dashboards that are included as part of this starter kit where you can see who's creating your flows, uh, who's using apps, where are those apps being used from, what's the number of makers, some great situations there. Then in terms of action and alerting, there is something called the Developer Compliance Center where if someone publishes an app, they're gonna be asked to attest that their app aligns or complies with corporate policies and therefore need to fill out a form and an approval will take place. There's also the app catalog, which is interesting. A lot of organizations talk about how they've built so many thousands of apps. And there's a part of me that says, well, how do you know you don't have duplicates? Because if all you're doing is creating a bunch of silos, thousands of silos, that's actually not good for your organization. But by having an app catalog, you can actually start to identify apps that may be duplicates. Or before someone builds an app, perhaps they go in and actually search the app catalog because it could be something they use instead of building themselves. So here's the DLP policy editor that I talked about. I think this is actually a pretty cool app. So what you do is you go ahead and you would select your uh, environment and your policy. And then what you can actually do is review that policy to see what is the configuration. So in this case, we can see the business data connectors that exist as part of that group. 
and then the non-business data connectors. And so what would happen is it gives you the ability to do what if scenario. So for example, if I went and dragged the OneDrive connector and I basically added it to the business data only data group, what would happen? Would that break any apps? And it'll actually tell me what are the apps that it would break. So for example, here's an example of a conference app that would break based upon the scenario here. And so this would allow you to then communicate with the owners of those apps before you go ahead and change that policy. Because at the end of the day, you don't want people to be surprised by changes. So once you're done and if you're happy with everything, you can go ahead and click save and that DLP policy will actually be updated. So really hoping at some point that this functionality is right in the admin experience, but for now, uh, here's an alternative solution. And it's also important to know that all of these apps and solutions are built upon Power Platform technology, which is pretty cool. So you can see what Microsoft is doing with their own tools and basically building solutions that everybody can take advantage of on the same platform. Here are those Power BI dashboards that I talked about. Big fan of these. Now, one thing you can do is you can see the number of environments. And in this case, I would argue that there's far too many environments that exist in that tenant, but um, it is it gives you that visibility. So you can see when those environments were created over time, and you can see the number of apps and flows that exist in each environment, which I think is pretty cool. Naturally, with Power BI, you have the ability to restrict timeframes, which is always pretty cool. Then another report, and this is another one I'm a big fan of, you can see the total number of apps that exist in your tenant, where they actually have been created, like the city, and then you can see this plotted on a map. You can also see how many were created in the past month and how many app makers do you have in total. So this applies to both apps and it applies to flows. So once again, you can see what locations are your biggest makers and maybe this helps you with training if you say well maybe we don't need to go train over here because they're doing a lot of this work already but this other location they seem to be lagging a little bit and we're not sure why but maybe we can go ahead and dig in and investigate so great great information that is exposed by using this starter kit now that concludes the uh, part three of this series and this whole series in general, but I do want to leave you with some links. I will include these links in the description for this video, but this is some additional information. Uh, what you can do is you, the top one is top 10 tips. Many of the tips that you've seen, but you can see them expanded upon as part of a session that myself and James Olenek participated in at the 2019 Business Application Summit. In addition, when I was on the Flow team, I did write a blog post on deploying a defense in depth strategy for security and governance. And this is another really important feature. You've seen a lot of different techniques over these past three videos, but much like cybersecurity, there is no silver bullet. So a lot of organizations use a defense in depth strategy when designing their own security architectures. And the whole idea is that you might have one layer that gets compromised, but you have other layers that pick up the slack and prevent further exposure. And Power Platform is no different. Think of it as what are the different layers of defense that you want to include? And that's really why this is broken down into three different parts, because naturally security is a big one, monitoring is another one, and then alerting and acting is certainly another layer. So think of those as three different layers to help govern and protect your organization. And then lastly, I talk about a use case, and we talked a little bit about this in video two, part two, where you can actually subscribe to the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center logs, and then go ahead and respond to those events and perform different actions. So that's another blog post worth checking out. So thanks again for checking out this video. I look forward to showing you more videos in the future. If you do enjoy this content, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. See ya.